Hey everyone, Mingus here. Today I'm going to be showing you all some of our post-process effects. We've released a few new ones in version 170 and I'm also going to show you a few of our pre-existing ones. Post-process effects are they're kind of looking at how cameras in the real world and their lenses and light um, can interact with one another and we're of course trying to replicate that in AR space. Um, and that will make a little more sense as I dive into the actual effects. Um, it's best practice to add a post-process effect by clicking camera, add component, post effect, and post process. Um, and then if you click add effect, you'll see all of our post process effects here. Uh, I'm going to start by showing you all bloom. So I'll select bloom. It's going to start quite blown out. I like to change it to around 0.8 so I can see myself again. Um, so what Bloom's doing is it's taking brighter areas and then it's blowing them out. It's also going to feather them a little bit. Um, the threshold is going to select or it's going to decide the threshold of, of bright, brightness and pixels that you actually want to have the Bloom applied to. So if I change it to 0.7, you'll see it, it's applying it to a lot more pixels. And if I'm changing it to 0.9, it's quite subtle. Um, what fast mode up here is going to do is if you select fast mode, it's going to improve the performance of your effect, but it's going to reduce the quality of, of, of the bloom a little bit. Um, so it depends on, I guess, how much you have going on in your effect. Um, if you have a lot going on, it might be best to select fast mode. So you keep your performance high. Um, you'll see you can play around with color. I will undo that. And then there's a bunch of other settings. And for every effect, there's a lot of settings I recommend you all just mess around with to get an idea of. You'll see I can play with the diffuse, the intensity of the bloom, and then a few other things. I will remove this. So to remove an effect, you want to click the three dots here. Um, if you want to reset it, you could do that, and that will put it back to the default settings. For now, I'm going to remove it. And then I will add another one. The next one I'll show you is chromatic aberration. So what this one's doing is, in the real world, um, sometimes colors are refracted wrong or, or possibly intentionally by a camera lens. Um, so, so the colors are broken up, as you can see here. It almost looks like a color bleed. Um, and if I turn the intensity up again, you'll see a lot better what I'm talking about. Um, again, there's a fast mode. This one's even more obvious probably than the last one. That you'll see it's a lot like the the quality you're you're, you're taking um, a sacrifice on the quality to improve the performance of your effect what's also cool is if you don't want it to just play around with the colors that are on screen you can add a LUT to it um, so I've already made one oops let me add it from my desktop I just made a monochromatic green LUT um, you'll see it looks like this and if I go back to my camera and I click here, I can add the LUT to that. And then it will apply that LUT to the chromatic aberration. So you'll see I'm still getting kind of this cool edge effect. Well, now I also have this, this green monochromatic thing going on. Um, I will delete this. Cool. Next one I will show you is distort. So like the name says, this is an easy way for you to distort the, the uh, screen. Um, yeah, you can pucker it or you can bloat it. Uh, if you want to change around with where that's happening, you can jump down to offset and change those numbers around. So you'll see now the pucker's happening up here as opposed to in the center. I'm just going to reset this. You can also rotate it if you want. And what's cool is it's going to stretch the, the view to fill the screen the whole time. So you don't have to worry about it getting cut off as you rotate it. Um, you can also... Oops, let me add that back. Zoom in um, or zoom out. Of course, if you zoom out, it's going to have to take the edge pixels and expand them to fill in the, the gaps. Um, yeah, that's distort. I will remove that. Next one I'll show you is grain. This is an easy way to kind of get that old fashioned video feel if you want. Um, you can turn up the strength of the grain. Now you'll see there's a, a black and white grain applied. 
If I want to introduce some color to it, I can slide up the color slider. And then I like to give it some speed just so there's a bit of flicker to it. Um, and now you kind of have a bit of a, a old fashioned camera or a stylized effect going on. Um, let's remove this one. I will add uh, now, oh, these three ones down here, these are our new ones. I'll show you some of those. So I'll show you lens flare, pretty self-explanatory, but that's gonna add a lens flare. You can play with the intensity of it and you can also play with the position of it on screen. If you wanted to add a few, you'll notice if I click add effect, lens flares now grayed out because I already have one. Um, a little workaround, if you duplicate your camera by right clicking on it and duplicating, um, you'll see I now have two lens flares. So if I move this one to somewhere else, you'll see I have one lens flare here and one lens flare there. So you can add a few cameras if you want to add a few. Okay, um, last but not least, I will remove this one. I'm gonna show you all motion blur, which is probably my favorite. And just like it says, it's gonna add a motion blur. So you see, as I move around, it creates some blur. Um, if you want things to look like they're moving really fast, or if you want it to look a bit dizzying or a little hypnotic, um, I'll turn the intensity up so you can see even better. And all of these are gonna to apply to not only me, but scene objects. So, you know, if I added a sphere, for example, um, and very quickly, I'm just going to set its position with a transit by time node. Um, change this to vector three. Plug that in there. Um, I will leave ping pong selected and then I'll just have it move up and down from 10 and negative 10 over, let's say, half a second. And we will loop it 10 times. We will get it to start when the effect starts. You'll see now that even the sphere has the motion blur applied to it. Um, I will delete these and I will remove the sphere. Go back to our camera um, and remove that. Yeah, so that is our post effects, uh, post process effects, sorry. I have one example on the desktop I will show you all. Bear with me while I open it. Um, I'm going to show you all how to apply a post-process effect to only one object or a group of objects if you want to. So in this example here that I've just opened up here, if I, I change it from me to someone dancing, you'll see that the person in the background dancing doesn't have, in this case, bloom applied to them. Um, and then the alien in the front does have bloom applied to them. So in order to do that, it's a bit complicated, but I'll show you. Um, what I actually have here that you can't see is there's an image here. Um, and that image has a render texture applied to it that has the alien on it. So, um, post-process effects, they apply to an entire render texture. Um, so if you want to apply it to only a particular object, you're going to have to isolate that object on a render texture. So... I have my camera here picking up everything on the default layer. And then you'll see I've added the alien's helmet to the default layer and the alien to the default layer. So this camera is rendering this alien and the alien's helmet. And then it's sending what it's rendering to a render texture as opposed to the final render output. So I've made a render texture down here that you can do by doing an asset, texture, render texture. So I've added this render texture, and now this camera is sending its feed to that render texture, and then I'm applying that render texture to this image that you can't actually see, but the image you'll see, I have the texture set to render texture. Um, and then this camera has a bloom applied to it. So in short, what's happening is the camera is rendering the alien. It's applying a bloom only to what it's rendering, which is the alien. It's sending what it's rendering to this render texture and then I have the render texture slapped onto this image that is then getting picked up by the 2D camera. And the 2D camera is what's sending that image to the final render output. If you want to play around with this, one good thing to remember is um, you want to make sure your camera's clear type is set to color depth. And the clear color, you're going to want it to be 0, 0, 0, 0, so black with a 0 alpha. 
um, or else you'll see if I change it, it's not gonna work. So yeah, that's a cool way um, to play around by, it doesn't work for all of our post-process effects, but you are able to apply a lot of them to individual objects by using render textures. So it's a cool way here, and I'll just show you one other thing. If I remove bloom, I can apply, say, chromatic aberration and turn that way up. You'll see now I don't have it applied to me, but again, the alien, um, and it's going to work better in the dancing videos. But it's just a cool way to add some effects only to particular objects in the scene if you want that object, for example, this alien, to have more of a trippy feel, but you don't want the person behind it to have that feel. Cool, yeah. That is post-process effects. Um, I hope you learned something. As always, if you have questions, find us in the Discord. Uh, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.